Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have understood that how can we determine or how can we estimate the percentage of nitrogen, carbon and hydrogen or various other elements that could be present in the organic compound. And now in this topic basically we are going to discuss about that how can we determine the percentage of phosphorus in the organic compound. So now let us do that. So here we are going to discuss about that how can we determine the percentage of phosphorus in a particular organic compound. So there are two methods on which we are going to estimate the percentage of uh, the phosphorus in the particular organic compound. So let me talk about those two methods and among that the first method is that is using ammonium molybdate. So how ammonium molybdate would help us to determine the presence of phosphorus in uh, the organic compound. So it has a particular steps we have to follow and then only we could determine uh, a particular product and uh, because of that product we could estimate that what is the percentage of uh, the phosphorus in the organic compound. So this is the first method that I am going to talk about and uh, this uh, acquires a particular multiple step reactions. So those reactions are as follows that I am going to discuss over here. That is uh, the first of all the thing that we have to do is we have to take the organic compound which consists of phosphorus uh, that is or which we think that uh, that consists of a particular element that is phosphorus uh, and that is what we have to determine. So Suppose we have an organic compound that consists of uh, uh, phosphorus and uh, that organic compound is to be treated with uh, that is fuming nitric acid that is HNO3. So if that particular organic compound will consist of uh, phosphorus then obviously the product that we could obtain is basically a phosphoric acid. But if that doesn't consist of uh, uh, that is uh, a phosphorus, the phosphoric acid won't be obtained. So suppose if the organic compound consists of phosphorus and if that is been reacted with HNO3, then the product that we could get is basically H3PO4 that is phosphoric acid. So this is the thing that we have obtained uh, that is a phosphoric acid but the reaction doesn't stop over here and uh, the process doesn't stop over here. What we have to do is we have to do uh, multiple steps over here that is we have to add ammonia along with that of the uh, ammonium molybdenate so as to produce a particular product. So the uh, phosphoric acid that uh, that is what we have and what we have to do is basically uh, we have to take uh, that is ammonia that is NH3 along with that of that is uh, ammonium molybdate. So this is what I am going to represent over here that is ammonium molybdate. Just as to indicate that uh, this is ammonium molybdate I am uh, writing it in a very short form. So and along with that of the phosphoric acid so that is H3PO4. So whenever this kind of reaction happens a kind of precipitate has been formed and that kind of precipitate is nothing but that is uh, NH4 thrice PO4 12 moles of that is MO3. So this is what we have obtained over here and this kind of uh, precipitate or this kind of complex that we have obtained over here is basically known as ammonium phospho molybdate. So this is what we have obtained that is what we have do we had did is we have taken an organic compound we have reacted with uh, nitric acid and because of the oxidation uh, we have formed that is H3PO4 and that on that solution basically we have added ammonia along with that of uh, ammonium molybdate so as to obtain a basically a complex or so as to obtain a precipitate of that is ammonium phospho molybdate. So now this plays a very vital role and this is how we can obtain uh, the percentage of the phosphorus. So in this case it has been found that uh, the molecular mass of this product that we have obtained over here is basically it has been found to be 1877 uh, gram per mole. So because of this detail we could easily estimate the percentage of phosphorus in it. So let me explain that. So therefore we know that is uh, the uh, molar mass of uh, that is uh, the product or the precipitate that we have obtained that is nothing but that is ammonium phospho molybdate is what we have obtained and it has been found to be that is uh, 1877 gram per mole and suppose uh, we have considered uh, the compound suppose if the compound that we have taken so as we have reacted with uh, uh, nitric acid suppose that is what we have taken as m gram So while reacting m gram of uh, the organic compound with uh, nitric acid along with that of ammonia and uh, that is uh, uh, ammonium molybdenate, we have got uh, a particular uh, molar mass uh, that is uh, a particular product that is basically nothing but uh, ammonium phospho molybdate and that has a gram that is m1 gram of uh, that is uh, 
ammonium phosphor molybdate has been obtained that is ammonia so if we compare it uh, with uh, that how much amount of the substance that we have obtained or how much amount of uh, the phosphorus uh, that we have obtained so that is what i am going to discuss over here suppose if we have concerned or suppose if we have taken that is a uh, uh, 1877 gram of uh, that is the uh, precipitate that is again i would write it over here as ammonium phosphomolybdate just in a short form so as we could understand it in a uh, better way that is 1877 gram of ammonium phosphomolybdate will give us uh, that is uh, 31 or that consists of 31 gram of phosphorus and what we have got is we have got that is m1 gram of that particular precipitate so therefore what we are going to do is that is therefore m1 gram of that is ammonium phosphomolybdate will consist of basically it will consist of x gram of uh, phosphorus so that could be uh, or we could uh, basically we could write it as that is uh, 31 into m1 the whole divided by 1877 gram of phosphorus so this is how we can determine the uh, gram of phosphorus that is being obtained in a particular organic compound so this is what we can obtain uh, in grams but what we have to do is we have to determine the percentage of uh, uh, the uh, phosphorus that has been present in the organic compound so as i have mentioned here that is the organic compound has weight m gram so what you have to do is uh, it is very easy to determine the percentage and that is therefore the percentage of phosphorus in the organic compound can be determined by suppose uh, suppose what we have got over here is we have got uh, that is 31 into m1 divided by 1877 so what we have to do is that is 31 into m1 the whole divided by that is 1877 and basically uh, the uh, number of moles or uh, what we have taken we have taken that is m gram of organic compound so divided by m into 100 so this is how we could get the percentage of phosphorus in that organic compound so this is the main thing that we have got to know over here so this is the formula that where we could obtain the percentage of phosphorus in the organic compound so what we have to do is we have to take the uh, uh, mass of uh, the organic compound and that is nothing but m and in which basically the m1 amount of uh, that is uh, ammonium phosphomolybdate will be obtained and that is what we have to substitute over here and this is how we can do the calculation and we could get uh, the percentage of phosphorus in the particular organic compound so this was method one so we have to talk about the method two also there is an alternative method also so that we could determine uh, uh, the percentage of phosphorus in the organic compound so let me discuss about that also so the method two is basically using magnesia so using magnesia also we could determine the percentage of the phosphorus in the organic compound so again the the reaction of the steps that are being involved it is very much similar to that of the method one that we have did and uh, those methods are i'm going to repeat it over here that is what we have to do is we have to take the organic compound of a particular mass that is m gram so that organic compound that should be reacted with that is a uh, fuming nitric acid that is HNO3 so in this case basically obviously if the uh, compound consists of phosphorus obviously it will react with phosphoric acid and that so because of that basically the oxidation would occur and we could obtain that is H3PO4 or that is phosphoric acid and now what happens is in that solution basically what we have to do we have to add magnesia so whenever the magnesia is been reacted with that of the phosphoric acid that is h3po4 that the product that we could obtain is basically it is mg nh4 po4 that is known as magnesium ammonium phosphate so this is what we have obtained and uh, but uh, the reaction doesn't stops over here or the process doesn't stops over here what we have to do is we have to uh, take this precipitate and we have to basically we have to ignite it so whenever that is uh, we will ignite that is mg nh4 po4 that is magnesium ammonium phosphate and suppose if we have ignited it so while igniting the product that we could obtain is basically mg2 p2o7 which is nothing but which is basically known as uh, magnesium pyro phosphate so this is what we have got so again i am going to repeat it that is what we have did is we have taken an organic compound of a particular mass that is m 
and we have uh, we did a reaction with that is of HNO3 so as to get uh, phosphoric acid and in that solution only we have added a magnesia so as to obtain that is magnesium ammonium phosphate but that was not the only thing that we have did we have ignited that kind of precipitate so as to obtain that is magnesium pyrophosphate and this will play a vital role and now let me explain uh, this thing uh, with the help of uh, a certain calculation it has been found that uh, the molar mass of uh, that is uh, magnesium pyrophosphate it has been found to be that is uh, 212 gram per mole so therefore suppose if we have considered the organic compound suppose the organic compound uh, that we have uh, used is basically it is of uh, suppose m gram and while reacting that m gram of organic compound we have got uh, the mass of uh, the uh, that is magnesium pyrophosphate that is suppose it has been found to be that is m1 gram so now it is very much clear that how can we calculate it so let me explain this uh, with the help of the particular calculation that is uh, we know that is uh, if we take that is 22 uh, 222 uh, gram of uh, that is uh, magnesium pyro phosphate just i am i'm just indicating you with the short thing so that we could uh, uh, come to the point so this will give us basically an amount of that is 62 gram of uh, phosphorus obviously because of the molecular form also we have mentioned over here that is uh, this is mg2p2o7 and here it, it consists of that it's two uh, moles of uh, phosphorus and that is what we could get that is 62 gram of phosphorus over here so that is the reason that uh, if we take that is 222 gram of uh, magnesium pyrophosphate then in that uh, basically 62 gram of phosphorus will be present but what we have did is we have got that is m1 gram of uh, that is magnesium pyrophosphate so therefore we could say that is the m1 gram of uh, magnesium pyrophosphate will consist of basically it will consist of we have to do a cross multiplication over here that is it will give us that is 62 into m1 divided by that is 222 gram of phosphorus so while reacting that is a uh, m gram of uh, organic compound we have got that is 62 into m1 divided by 222 gram of uh, phosphorus but that was not the main thing that we uh, needed we needed the percentage of phosphorus so for that it is very much easy to calculate that is the percentage of phosphorus in the organic compound can be calculated as that is what we have got is we have got that is uh, 62 into m1 divided by 222 gram of phosphorus and that too in a particular organic compound that has weighted that is m gram so what we have to do is we have to multiply it by 100 so as to get a particular percentage of phosphorus in it so this is what we have got and uh, this is the formula where uh, we have to use it whenever we are using uh, magnesia so this m is nothing but the weight of the organic compound this m1 is basically the uh, magnesium pyrophosphate that we have obtained and the only thing is we have to substitute this values over here and this is what we have got over here so that is the thing and uh, this is how we can uh, obtain or we can estimate the percentage of phosphorus in the organic compound and uh, that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and you have got to know the various ideas so as to uh, determine the percentage of phosphorus in the organic compound so thank you and i hope you'll share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to channel Thank you so much.